Okay, let's keep going. So now the food goes to the small intestines. You have the GIP inhibit stomach, you have the CCK and secretum. Both of them go to the pancreas as pancreas release digestive enzyme and bicarbonate. And that's the pancreas. It's right next to your duodenum because you're going to release digestive enzyme to the duodenum. We talk about pancreas in the endocrine part. So you had the uh, isolate of leg and head, pancreatic isolate. That's the one release uh, hormone. Alpha cells release glucagon and beta cells release insulin. That's the endocrine system. Now all the other part is the exocrine. They release digestive enzymes. And they will go through the duct and move out to the small intestines. So the pancreas is both the endocrine and exocrine organ. So the endocrine part, we talk about these two hormones. And now let's look at the exocrine part. Release water, ions, and also the enzymes. You found the enzyme can digest mainly those four biomolecules. Release enzyme digest carbohydrate, lipid, protein, and nucleic acid. Because that's the last place you need to digest. You need to digest everything. And after duodenum, jejunum, that's the place for absorption only. And to trigger the enzyme release is a feedback mechanism. So after the molecules, uh, the food, we call the chyme, C-H-Y-M-E, chyme, very acidic, go to the stomach. Uh, from the stomach, go to the small intestines. It will trigger the uh, small intestines, release those uh, endocrine signals and go to the pancreas. It can ask the pancreas release bicarbonate, neutralize the the uh, acetic chyme, and also release digestive enzymes. Now let's look at liver. Liver has more than two hundred functions, and that's the biggest organ in your abdominal pelvic cavity. And has four different lobes. Liver. Uh, if you don't have liver, uh, you you. You, you die, you need this organ. And liver have very good uh, re reproductive function. So if you cut the 50% of the liver off, it actually can grow back. So you can donate the liver to the other person. And the liver's function, uh, it reduce the old red blood cell. And, and in the digestive system, it re release bile. And bile is is the enzyme help you to break down the fat. And this slide show you the blood circulation. So you have blood go to your small intestines and your small intestines will digest the food and the, the nutrients will go through the hepatic portal vein. So before those nutrients go back to your circulation, the hepatic portal vein will send it to the liver. Liver is supposed to clean those toxic molecules from your food. And after it clean it, it will send the clean blood through the hepatic vein, go back to your circulation. And your body consider alcohol a toxic molecule. So if you drink too much alcohol, you damage your liver because the liver is supposed to remove those alcohol. And this slide show you the liver from the front view. You have two lobes, you can see it. And that's the gold blader. That's where the bile is stored. So in the posterior view, you found, okay, that's the gold blader. So the liver produced bile, you'll put into the gold blader. Gold blader is a container for bile. And this show you, after they remove the liver, you can see the pancreas and you can see the gold blader. And their duct combine together because those uh, digestive juice go to the duodenum uh, from the bile from the liver and those pancreatic juice, they will, they will all go out to help to digest the food in the duodenum. So they combine together. And the trigger for bile release is still a reflex. So when the acidic chyme go to the stomach, and stom uh, go to the small intestines, sorry, from the stomach go to the small intestines, and it will, it will trigger the small intestines, release the hormone, and the CCK will go to the gallbladder, and as the gallbladder release bile. I'll just leave this to you. 
and liver have millions of lobio. Lobio is the functional unit. Like each one of them serve exactly the same function as as liver. So let's use next slides to explain. So this the the liver uh, slides, and each one of this structure is called the lobio, and that's the functional unit. So this is the lobio. What happens is the blood will go to uh, through the hepatic hepatic vein, hepatic portal vein will go to the the liver, and it will be cleaned. After it's cleaned, it will go through the central vein and goes through the hepatic vein. So when you go to here, that's clean. So that's the dirty one will go through those liver cells that have been cleaned and go back. So that's the flow. So from the hepatic portal vein, blood from the small intestines will go to here and it will go through this process. And once it goes to here, it gradually being cleaned. And when you go to the central vein, eventually go to the hepatic vein and these are the clean blood. And liver also produce bile. Bile will go in the opposite direction. It will go from here and gradually go to here, go to the bile duct. And the bile duct will collect those bile and go to the gallbladder. Now we're in the large intestines. The large intestines, not too much nutrients left. It's mainly water and some vitamin uh, dissolved in, in water. So that's the place uh, can be absorbed by large intestines. And also in your large intestines, you have a lot of bacteria. We call them healthy bacteria that live with you. Uh, about 60% of those bacteria living in the large intestines. And this slide show you the large intestines. So start from here, ascending column, transverse column, descending column, sigmoid column, and rectum. And this is the appendix. Because of the anatomical structure, sometimes the food can go to here and can cause the appendix infection. So this slide uh, show you the surgery of appendix uh, surgery, remove appendix, I'll leave it to you. Okay, so in your large intestines, you also have the four layers, mucosa, submucosa, the muscle layer, and serosa. In the large intestines, there's no digestive function. They all absorb. They take water and electrolytes, those dissolving water. They also produce a lot of mucus. So you see those goblet cells. These are the goblet cells produce mucus. And they also form feces. And now we go to the uh, rectum part. So once the food go to here, we don't call it the food, we call it the feces. And it will go through the anus and come out. And once the feces go to there, it will trigger a reflex and the, the feces can come out, re release those sphincter muscles. Okay, why people fart? Uh, now you learn the GI tract only have two openings, either the mouth or the anus. So sometimes you have the gas molecule. Oh, let's go back. Uh, the gas molecule came from your digestive system. You. Uh, the, the chemical process of digestion can produce gas. And sometimes you swallow, you swallow gas in. And if it come out from your mouth, it called the burp. And come from the anus, there's, there's fart. And because the, the gas from your, from your anus come from, uh, have some, some gas molecules uh, after digestion, like you have the uh, methane, so it does not smell good. Okay, that's it.